Test one, two, three. The audio looks clean. Mango, hello? Yeah, I just had to blow my nose. Okay, right, right, I'm right, speaking right, right. up. I am in the mic. Can you hear me loud and clear? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the download where I, Chelsea Bites, the tech content creator of this YouTube channel, just, you know, give you a recap of the month. Now, we just started this in February, so we're going to do January and February for this episode, but I'm joined here with my manager, Mango. Um, introduce yourself. First of all, when you introduce yourself, we're gonna you're going to have to like, you do more, you're not just a tech content creator. You got to say, hi, you know, I'm Chelsea Bytes, tech variety content creator, host extraordinaire. But yes, I am Mango. I am uh, the behind the scenes of Chelsea Bytes. How close are you on your mic that you can hear the... I'm it all? not close on my mic. But I can hear you go... Don't worry about it. I'm not close Don't worry on my about mic. It. Well, as you can see, uh, we're off to a great start. So we're going to recap January and February real quick, real quick, just us personally. So we started off hot for New Year's. We were in New Orleans, remember? We spent New Year's in New Orleans visiting family. We brought in 2023 watching all them people get drunk at the Ritz. And then that, we got back home. It was at the Ritz. You're right. It I was. I forgot. Yeah. You forgot. See? See? You already <laughs> forgot. And then remember we missed our anniversary. Dang. We both we, we both met, well. We well, both forgot. Correction. I said we. We we have a couple of anniversaries, so we miss one of them. We missed our first anniversary of the year. We have quite a few anniversaries. That's a long story. Don't worry about that. We deleted DoorDash because we were personally funding DoorDash everything. Like we could have bought them a yacht. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. so then right after that, I had to fly out to LA to do that big, you know, like shoot for like four days. That was fun. I can't even give the details about that yet, but that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work. I was doing 12 hour days. I don't know if I want to be an actor after all that. <laughs> that was a lot of work. The night we got back, remember, there is it. Somebody blew up a microwave in the apartment. Mm, right. Yeah. 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 The no, night the, I got there, back. There was police, like five fire trucks. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. We did the all around stream. Remember that one stream where we did everything? We did the we did the gourmet stream, nightmare stream, workstation stream, all in one stream. It was like a five, stream. five different camera angles. Yes, we had five different cameras. We had like three different scenes. It was this. It was my workstation. It was the kitchen, and it was seamless. I was really proud of us for that. Like we could actually move this little stream around, like. There's something powerful about taking your stream anywhere. We drove down for my dad's birthday. And at, literally for the 31st, remember? We drove yep. down with both of the pets. Honestly, I did not have to take Schrody, but I was being extra. We drove him down. We celebrated my dad's birthday in person. And we did a charity stream, our first charity stream of the year. We raised over $2,000 for our charity. That was nuts. So already what, big wins. What charity was it? It was Girls Who Code. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Why would you ask me if you didn't know? Well, you should say it. Okay. Well, then why did you just say it? Because <laughs> that's your job. Oh, it's my job. Okay. Right. <laughs> and then, of course, that's when Black History Month began. And we got to do some really great stuff with the Party Chat podcast. And we spent over $1,000 on creators. And we got to support them for Black History Month, which was so wonderful. So we did a whole bunch of shout outs. We had a whole big event for my partnerversary because my partnerversary is on Valentine's Day. So we had a partnerversary giveaway uh, charity celebration because I gave away the TV that day, too. We flew out to L.A. and we went to go check out Super Nintendo World because we were invited to check it out that week. And then yes. we checked out the Capcom Cup, which we're also invited to, you know, check out. And then we got to see the Street Fighter League World Championship, which was nuts. And it was the first. Was that the first one? It was the first time they did. Yeah. A world. Like one. a world. Yeah. That was that was wild. We got to meet so many people, too. Like Joy really saved my butt there. Like because I thought we were just going to go in and just, you know. Shout out. Curious Joy. 
Yeah, we love Curious Joy here. Seriously. Mwah. She, ugh, angel. And then we went to New Orleans right after that. We flew from LA to New Orleans for Mardi Gras, where we also couldn't stream because the internet was all so bad. But we got to celebrate. And it was a great time. It was a great time. And this whole year, I've gotten to play some new D&D games with some of my greatest, greatest players I've ever had. Aaliyah, Alex, Normaki, and Jahara Jade. Oh, they're, mwah. they make the game so fun, truly. But that's, I just recapped the last two months in like 10 minutes. That's Is now, that accurate? That's, yeah, that's pretty much most of what we did. Yeah, that's most of what we did. Look at that. 45 seconds on the clock. I'm proud of me. Oh, man. Is there anything I missed, Manager Mango? Of course. But I think you got the main things. What um, did I miss? Well, we also introduced a large set of emotes into the channel. Ah, you're right. Yes. I did miss that. Yes. Thank over you. over Over 30 emotes. 30 new emotes on Chelsea Bites. So be sure to go check them out. It's time to move on because we could go in all day on, you know, what I missed and what I could do better, what's wrong, what's right. But we got to talk about our anime, our movies and our shows that we've been watching for the past couple of months and what we've liked so far and what we kind of wanted to watch, what we didn't get to watch, you know, things like that. So we'll start anime. Things we watched and I'm going to list it in release order. We watched the continuing series of Boku no Hero, and I think it's still going into the winter season. Wow. Uh, this dropped, I think, October 1st. And then I wanted to check out Eminence in Shadow. That dropped in October 5th. But now we're moving into 2023. So Tokyo Revengers, they got a new season that dropped January 8th. Nier Automata dropped January 8th as well. Did you know The Vampire Dies in No Time dropped January 9th? You know, we saw the first season of that. No, we didn't. We did. Remember? Remember the vampire that was like, like weak, like weak as heck? If you look up The Vampire Dies in No Time, you'll realize it. Oh, yes. right. Right. Yeah. We, See, didn't, we, did not, we did not watch the first season of that. We watched we like watch two episodes. We watched two well, episodes. Well, then we need to that. finish it because they got a second season. It was good. So, Vinland Saga dropped January 10th, the second season. It's been pretty good. I liked it. I've been liking it so far. I know Mango's been calling it Farmland Saga. And yes, it is all about farmland and teaching people how to survive and deal with being a surf. Dumb. Is that the right way to say that? What? What? what is, they're indentured servants. That's the word I'm looking for. So, they're slaves. But they're being paid. No, they're yes. not. Yes. So no, the, so, so not. no, no, no. So they're literally, literally, they sell their crops to the owner. A slave would not have those. Okay, the slave that I, the American slave does not have those privileges. Mm. Like, am I? I'm not tripping on that, am I? I feel like I feel like there's. I don't I think they like, sell the crops though. They do. They literally said that. They said he. You can. No, he. No, freedom. he had said. Yeah, by by just working it off. That's what he said. No, no, selling the crops back to the master. See, we're. I'm gonna put that in there, and y'all can. Let they me literally. Know. I, everybody in right. the show. Everybody in the show calls them slaves. Yes, because they're rude, but but they don't. They're buying their freedom. That's why old boy is so motivated to grow the crops. You don't think he's working that hard just to be good with the master? These old woods are on part of my land, and the two of you will be borrowing it from me. Borrowing? Yes. I'll leave it in your care. You're to clear this forest, till and plant the fields, and bring in the harvest. Then I'll purchase the wheat from you at a fair price. And once you've earned enough to cover what I paid for you, you'll be able to buy yourselves back. <laughs> right. The no, silence proves me. It literally the says this right. I, okay, no, right, that's, but but that's either way, but works. either way, but either way, it's true that they can buy their freedom. You're. It's not that they're buying their freedom. He said they, that. That's no. It was a bad translation. What he said was. It's a bad translation. 
what he said was that they can work off their quote unquote debt. So basically, if they work enough and the debt? owner deems that they've the owner deems that they've worked hard enough to pay the value that he bought them for, then he's willing to let them go. They're not Man, paying it's anything. The same, it's the same thing. No, it's, it's not the same the, thing because it, it's fully up to him. Because it's fully up to it's fully yes, up to the it owner. it was always fully up to him. No, however no, much, you, however no, much they were no, buying no, their freedom the owner, for. No, the owner, argue? they're not buying it. Because look, look, that's like that's like if the, okay, same example. Literally- if there was a slave in America. Right, black slave in America. How are you and, arguing and, uh, on this? This is the what you owner, want to argue about? I'm and the like... owner, because you keep interrupting, and the owner says <laughs> that they're going right. to work, and that, hey, hey, slave, you can work to pay off your uh, debt. And when I decide, then you can go free. That's exactly what he said. And plenty of slaves, it's the same thing. They, he, they can go when free when he said clip. so. We're going to play the clip over Mango this whole time just to prove that what I said was right. And and you'll see, you'll see. Now, record of Ragnarok. How do you feel about the second part of that? The what? Record of Ragnarok Part Two. I mean, it's it's whatever. I don't know. I, I've it's read whatever. the manga. You didn't yeah. care. So we watched all of it. Oh, and- I mean, the only thing that I care about is that the the English dub is a little strange. I, it's it not that it's it's not that it's bad. Oh, it's hilarious! You better start now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna play the clip. The English dub is hilarious. I gotta say, my boy is he Buddha? Buddha. That's Buddha. Had, Buddha had me tripping for the English <laughs> dub, and then some of the oh, oh, this either the samurai or one of the swordsmen. Oh no, no, one of the samurai no, has not the samurai, the, not yes, not the samurai, yes. the 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 sumo guys. The sumo guys had a funny voice. Well, was, one of the sumo, yeah, one of the sumo guys, but also one of the samurai. One of the yeah. samurai has the most Japanese voice. Yes. I mean, like, it's supposed to be, it's like, I don't know. It, it's I'm like gonna, how, no, like. No, no, I'm going to look up the voice actor and see if he's allowed to do that. Because he was doing it and I was like, oh. It seems like the most problematic Japanese voice you've ever heard. Yes. Watch the dub. I normally don't say this, but if you watch Record of Ragnarok Part 2, watch the dub because it's so funny. All right, we got to move along because of time. Kimetsu no Yaiba is getting that movie. It dropped February 3rd, but it hasn't dropped out where we are until this weekend. So like a month later, we're finally getting it. We're going to give a review uh, sometime, uh, hopefully, uh, for the March download. And we'll tell you all what we thought about it. And then Agretzko, that dropped February 16th. I've actually liked season five a lot more than season four. You literally were like, I don't like this season. I don't like this plot. Okay, like straight I don't up. like, you said, I don't like, like politics. Like, like you said right, that, you said that like, yesterday. Like, I get it, but like, I like it more than season four because she was making weird, dumb decisions in season four and it was making me upset. I don't like the politics plot and it was getting on my nerves last night, but... But it's still more exciting because they're still including, you know, their relationship and, you know, it, it's hitting on relevant topics that I think are to them. Because I'm, I'm interested mm. in Haida and they're still bringing up my girl from the Net Cafe. So I can do that. I, I would like to move away from Red Skull for a bit because I don't take it on my nerves. But that's yeah. all anime. Let's move on to the movie. So when we got back from New Orleans, the first thing we watched was Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. I love that movie. I gotta buy it. Actually, that movie was great. But it, what, what? Give me what was the most memorable memorable thing for you from Puts and Boots: The Last Wish? Uh, the main villain. But it wasn't like that cheap, like where the main villain that does like a flashback at the very end, and you find out he was picked on, and so then you're like, oh, right. he was just it wasn't he cheap. Was just a villain. It, it was just like, man, he's right though. Like he's honestly right though. Yeah, so, I think my yeah. favorite was uh, Jack Corner, but you can uh, watch the the movie and tell me what y'all think. OK, you'll yeah. you'll agree with me 100 percent. We watched Megan, which was I loved it. That's it. I loved it. It was a good thriller. Uh, it, it actually, the main character was so unlikable, though. I did not like her at all. 
that was wild. Like she really was the antagonist for me. Well, even outside of just being weird, like the main character kept doing really weird and problematic stuff. Manipulative stuff. But like, like even outside of that, just the actress, I like, I'm sorry. I just, it seemed like she was like emotionless almost. Like I, I could, I, I really did not enjoy. I think that was kind of the point. I think that's the only way that would have made sense for her. Cause if she was like an emotional character, but she was doing stuff like that, it wouldn't have made sense. I think she, she had some serious issues of her own cause they move fast. Like this was a, it felt like they were building a thriller where they had to, even the beginning of the movie was kind of like ridiculous a bit to me. I was like, are we really here? Like, is this really happening? But it happened. Mm-hmm. And the way she recovered from that, the the main character recovered from that tragedy, I was like, that was kind of fast. It's like she didn't really mm-hmm. care. Yeah. She, she, was, I, she was the real problem. She was the real problem in Megan. But yeah, y'all got to see it. I think it was fun. If you can find it streaming or, you know, have somebody play it for you, definitely do it. Next thing we saw was Quantumania. Mm. Man. I, I, you know what? I'll say it was a fun watch. I, I did give it a seven out of 10 when I left the theater. But I still mm. was mad. And I, I would never watch it again. It was fine, I guess. I don't know. I, I didn't really like they It felt like the villain was underused. And I get they had the whole like, oh, the villain will be back. But like it, a lot of the decisions didn't make sense that the villain was doing. The power scaling was all over the place. I mean, and there were definitely funny moments that had us laughing, but otherwise, like overall, I think it was a pretty bad movie. Um, I think I gave it like a six. Yeah, I I had fun. It was cool seeing some, you know, actors and characters, but it just it was it just made no sense. And then, oh man, so Scott Lang's daughter, I think she was like. Bro, she just wasn't good. Like, I got nothing from her. This actress they use. Because they've switched her out, like, three times. Like, she's the third actress for Scott Lang's daughter. Twice. Twice, right? No, no, no. There was a little girl. Well, I then, guess the little girl. And then yeah. there was, and then she grew up right before Scott disappeared. Yeah. And then they had her, this one. And she just, it's like stuff would happen and she just, it just did not register. And you could yeah. tell when, like, they were, like, she was supposed to be doing something strenuous, but they, like, cut to her for no reason. Or, like, they they it's, they made a lot of allowances for that actress. And I I just wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't feeling it. It's when an, when an actor, like, gets on screen and I start visibly getting annoyed that they're, just from them being there, I'm like, why are you here? That right. was, that was me with her. I was like, okay. But. Otherwise, I mean, Paul Rudd is Paul Rudd. Uh, they had some interesting changes, and yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't. I, I'm gonna just be real. Kang would never be beaten by a pile of ants. Never. Yeah, that was kind of weird. That was that was that was dumb to me. It was he just never, weird. They didn't really use his powers once he was like. He anytime he was like getting hit. Them. Could have yeah. destroyed them. Like it just made no sense. But that's the high level of that. I'm not gonna dive into it. Now we're moving on to our shows. So we've had a few shows that we've been meaning to watch or we have watched. So we're just gonna keep it short, quick, and to the point. Of course, The Last of Us Part One. You already know how I feel about it. It's one of the best video game adaptations we have ever experienced ever. It's it's excellent. They did one weird thing, which was really fucking weird, but. I enjoyed 98% of the show. Yeah, I'm trying to what? think. I don't think they've done anything else wrong. Mm-mm. Or really that just was, off. I'm going to say that was wrong. Like, for me, I just feel like that one moment was wrong. Like, we just shouldn't have done that. There was no need. Oh, there was one other thing that I think they should have done, but it, it didn't break the show. So I'm fine with it. I, I think they made up for that. But I'll save that, that for one the spores i think they should have kept the spores so they could mask up in certain areas they did it in the game they could have done it in the show i don't understand how they logic that it would be a problem in the show but 
I guess people just don't want to mask up. <laughs> I get it. You know, people yeah. flipped the nut in 2020, 2021, 2022. It's 2023. People still don't want to mask up. So I get it. Sure. But yeah, that's like my other error. But what they've done with it, like they flipped it in ways that I think are perfect. So love that show. Uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. We have to watch that. I've been seeing it all over Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. <that's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love it. I mean, Thank yes, I, I agree. We have to watch it. What, what are you? What do you so, want? So, so like, <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, isn't there? There's a comic behind it. Yeah, of course. The smartest people in the Marvel universe before Moon Girl existed were supposed to be between Mister Fantastic, Doctor Doom, and Valeria Richards. Generally, it kind of fluctuated between those three. Um, however, um, with Moon Girl's introduction, I think they're trying to say that, at least in some comics, they said she's smarter than all of them. She's the smartest person. Um, in other comics, they said, well, she's, you know, she's smart. She's she's a little young, so she's inexperienced, but she can trade blows when it comes to intelligence with those people. Um, so they, they fluctuated every now and then, right? Um, but yeah, yeah, she's a comic book character, devil dinosaur, comic book character, and it's cool that they have a show now. I definitely want to watch okay. it. Okay, I gotta figure out how they meet and all that because it just I guess it you'll just see. sounds you see that and it just sounds like a weird plot, like little girl who has a dinosaur. Okay, and, it, sure. and that's a devil dinosaur, right? A dinosaur from hell, yeah. So, those are shows that we got to pick up. I still. I know people didn't like the game Gotham Knights, but the show Gotham Knights dropped this year. So I'm curious to see what they're, what? they're going for there. Yeah, there's a show, Gotham Knights. And it looks like no, it's after, it, like, what? you didn't know that? You, di you didn't know that? There's a show? Yeah, there's a show called Gotham Knights. I had no idea. Wow. I I taught Mango something. Oh, my god. It's premiering, premiering next month. Oh, it's next month. Yeah, so it, yeah, it's dropping this year. Next month, I think we should watch it. I absolutely think we should watch the first three episodes, and that'll be fun. All right. So we're going to talk about some games, just some immediate games, and I've got the list here. So in January, the ones that dropped that I actually paid attention to and played some, we had, if you're, if you're like a One Piece fan, there was One Piece Odyssey that dropped dragon ball z kakarot dropped that's for all you nerds i did not play that but because i know of those anime i was like let me let me let me see who's who's out there playing those games let me know if you're playing those games in the comments we also got to see forspoken forspoken drop i definitely played several hours of that game got so much hate so much hate and I was really disgusted because first of all, y'all not about to do our first black woman isekai like that. And for all of the complaints, the only complaint I heard the most was, oh my God, the dialogue. It's too cringy. What, who says that? When that's exactly what people would say. They, they didn't like that she dropped so many F-bombs, which I was fine with. I was like, I'm in another world. I mean, she's a teenage girl who got taken to another world. Like, honestly, who was homeless? A lot of the people who act normal are probably like sociopaths or something. <laughs> right. Some of y'all are just weird, but yeah, I think the the interactions with, I think the interactions with these characters were fine. I will say, like, the game didn't look great. And I played on the PlayStation because I heard that the PC version. Wait, the PC version wasn't even out yet. It's only on. Actually, I don't no. know. No, don't it know. was. It was the PC and the PlayStation 5 version. So the PC version wasn't optimized properly yet. So I got it on the PlayStation 5 because at least it was smooth on the PlayStation 5. Oh, right. I remember PC having was out, but apparently it had some issues. Yes. So just for just to get the best look when we played it on January 24th, when it dropped, it was so I could get the best quality look. It, it didn't look great. It, it had some dated graphics. And I am less forgiving because we have games like 
2018 God of War, which did great with not so much uh, with not so much uh, hard drive space. But yeah, for some reason, this one, while it was very pretty and the combat was very interesting and fun, and it's one of those games that it doesn't hand you all the answers. You have to find the all the little like details in the game. Like you, you really have to work to make the game special. Uh, kind of like you know how you have to find all the lore in Elden Ring or any f- uh from software game. Right. Exactly. But, um, you know, besides it not looking its best and, um, you know, it, it, uh, it, it may not have performed the way it should have on release, it still was an interesting game. There were still very fun, redeemable parts of it. And I think people just thought that, oh, well, this cringy care. I really hated that people boiled it down to, oh, well, this cringy character is cringy. Oh, uh, this game's bad. When that was the furthest, you know, from the point. There are plenty of games on the first IP when it drops. It's just not good, and people still love them. It had a lot of really good aspects to it. It did. It did. I enjoyed the parkour aspect. I loved running. It's been a long time since I've been able to just run. Just run away from my problems in a game. Yeah, the movement was great. Yeah, it was awesome. I enjoyed it. But yeah, if if you're curious about Forspoken... I'll say uh, I would wait for it to go on sale because I can't forgive like quality. And that's mm, if it's not good quality, I'm not going to pay full price for it. But it is still fun. Like it is a good game at base. You can play the game. But that and I was really, really impressed because the day after that, we got Hi-Fi Rush. And that game for a beat game? Like, bro, so good. And it had no, I don't think it had any marketing that I noticed. It, 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 all I saw were my friends tweeting about it on Twitter. I don't know if they brought anything up about it, but it was just there. They just dropped it. It was just a good, no, it had some marketing, but I really, I must have missed most of it because it it kind of seemed to come out of nowhere for me. It did. It was really good. I think Xbox should be proud of that. That was a great release. And then, of course, the Dead Space remake. <laughs> have you have you beaten a Dead Space game? Um, that's a big no for me. Me too. Me too. There's a so you know when I was at a uh, school with you when I when we were in college and we hadn't met yet, I was in my dorm room pr- trying to play Dead Space two, trying. I was recording myself play it, and I screamed the whole time Dang. in the demo. I couldn't beat it. I couldn't beat it. And yeah, that was a very short stint. But but the remake dropped on January 27th. So like, look at that. We had like back-to-back games for like a whole like four or five days, basically a work week. Yeah. And I'm mixed on the Dead Space remake because I don't, I, I don't like how they remade it. I didn't play it. I watched the story. And they made some really weird story decisions. In and the Dead Space remake? Yeah, they changed up pieces of the story. Uh-huh. And it didn't add to the overall story. And Isaac looks so weird. Oh, because they're showing his face now, right? Yeah, and he talks. He talks now. Interesting. Have you seen his face? Nope. His face looks like people have said Philip DeFranco. People have said yeah, um, Adam Sandler. It is not cute at all. I and and they use the same guy, the same uh, voice actor, same model. It's just for some reason this engine made well, him see, look like. I remember was, how his face looked in the in the original. They showed his face in the old game. Yeah. Yeah, in Death Bates Two. Oh, this is his face? Yeah. It's we describe his face to you. What would you he, he what does doesn't, that look like? Like in Dead Space 2, right? His face looked like somebody who had been through some stuff. Yes. He looks stressed. This looks like the neighborhood. He looks like Adam Sandler. Yes. It's exactly. Kinda, it's yeah. not cute. Now, the game looks polished. It looks way cleaner. Like they could have done a remaster. 
Like that's all they needed to do was remaster it. It was already a great game. The lore for Dead Space is deep. So messing with the story, I feel like is not a smart idea. And I understand like maybe they wanted to, maybe there was some like weird rivalry between, uh, you know, striking distance and, uh, you know, the people who own Dead Space now because they did not end on good terms. So maybe they just wanted to kind of twist it and make it more their thing. Because microtransactions, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but I wasn't about it because there's a reason why Glenn Schofield left and is no longer working on Dead Space. And I was like, well, if y'all don't respect the creator, then why would I, re- why would I pay for y'all to go and puppet the game? You know? Right. It, 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 bu- it, it left a bad taste in my mouth. So, yeah, uh, it, was, it, it, it was clean looking, but I wasn't excited to go and pick it up. But there was that, and then we had Deliver Us Mars. We just played Deliver Us the Moon. You should definitely check it out if you like puzzles. Whew, Hogwarts Legacy. I put out a Twitter video on what I think of creators playing Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, we'll link it in the uh, description. We'll link it, and I have my opinions. Now, if you play the game and you buy the game, And uh, if you're not aware of the controversy, I'm not here to judge you. I am not here to throw aspersions onto you. If you are a creator and you you should know very well uh, what's going on in this space and how you respond to that controversy, it says something about you. But I digress. I think my only critiques of Hogwarts Legacy as a game, it should have been multiplayer. Period. Mm, Yeah, true. Like that's really as the a only game, as a game, it should have been multiplayer. It makes no sense for a game None. like that to be single player. If I was really like, if I really wanted to play Hogwarts Legacy offline, I would have wanted to be able to go and play with my friends and like meet up with them for classes and go to Quidditch tournaments with them and go get butter beer and study and yeah, like come on, all right. Yeah. I just got hit with a timer, so we got to wrap it up on the games pretty soon. But yeah, like that's that's my ultimate critique for Hogwarts Legacy. Like, sure, single player games are great and they could be and it's the best Harry Potter game we are we are probably ever going to get in this decade and and the best Harry Potter game we've ever gotten because I played Goblet of Fire, Chamber of Secrets. I played Prisoner of Azkaban. They were okay, but they were not like this, especially single player games. Have you played any Harry Potter games? Um, I don't know. You I don't, don't remember. Know. You don't remember. Honestly, Harry, Harry Potter didn't no because Harry Potter is not really an important part of my life. Oh, they, all right. They don't really, I don't. Really I remember. did. It was one of the like I, those were games I was like, yeah, I gotta play Harry Potter. I loved Harry Potter, so I would snap them up when I was younger. But then, you know, I eventually just put it down and then I never picked that stuff back up again. So it was fun. I, they were great experiences. But yeah, from me playing then, I, I definitely recognize this is the best thing we're going to get now. But they, I just feel like they severely missed out with how great it could have been from a game perspective. They had just made it multiplayer. There are some games that are just meant to be played as a multiplayer game like people would have bonded even more if they could go to their uh dormitories and seeing their friends just hanging out having conversations yeah. eating in the it's, make it that hogwarts feel but yeah that game dropped um i didn't play it but uh definitely saw a lot of opinions about it and um let's let yeah what else did that was in february yeah, that was in February. So Hogwarts Legacy dropped February 10th, and then we got Metroid Prime remastered on February 8th. That was cool. That was really cool. It looks just like the old Metro Prime. I got to play it. I haven't, Can it, yeah, here, I haven't I'm, seen that one yet. You haven't seen it yet? Okay, you got to check nah. it out. So they dropped Life is Strange 2 on the Switch February 2nd. <sighs> How do you feel about that? I just, I mean, I don't. It doesn't seem like a Switch game to me, right? and I and I say that because it's like Nintendo can't have it both ways, right? They spend half their time talking about how 
they're a fun console they're a family console they are not meant for they even straight up they're like we're not meant for like serious gamers um they said the same thing with all their fighting games right we're, this isn't a fighting game they say smash is a it's a, a party game it's not a fighting game you know and that's how that's the reasoning they use on why they don't add certain features and why they don't do certain things but you can't have that same reasoning and put life is strange right a game about like depression and suicide and rape right and put that on the murder Switch. right yeah, it's just a, they have it's such a they, weird they have yeah. dead by daylight on the switch and like i i get it they have outlast don't, don't they have outlast on the switch yeah like again i, I get it but i also don't get it i think outlast outlast hold up yes outlast is on the switch i do not understand what nintendo is trying to yo hey i hope eventually you nintendo fans uh you get some more uh visual quality from your games maybe one day you'll go above uh what is it 1080p i don't know but uh. yeah yikes it's just it's just so many weird choices they make with their game catalog. They keep pumping the nostalgia machine, and and they don't update the quality of their their hardware. I what do we get the OLED? We got the OLED screen for the next Switch. I I'll have to make a segment for that next time. But yeah, so they they drop Life is Strange too. It's basically getting the Last of Us treatment where they remake it over and over and over again. They repackage it a million different ways, and I, I yeah, I'm tired of it. So we got that. I didn't. Oh wow, Tomb Raider Reloaded got a mobile drop. I didn't know that. Um, Tomb anything? Reloaded. Yeah, right. Uh. <laughs> that that happened on our part on on Valentine's Day. We got Tomb Raider Reloaded on mobile. I did want to try Wanted Dead. It looked interesting. I'll put the, I'll put the ad right here on Mango. Man, I haven't seen but that either. You haven't. I mean, that's fine. I don't think it was one of the big, you know, names this month because one of the big names was Atomic Heart. So, you, I know you know about Atomic Heart. What do you think about Atomic Heart? Mm, I feel like Atomic Heart's been coming out for like a year Ever. or something. Because I every yeah. time I see it, I'm like, oh, it's still coming out. It's still coming out. And I get they're going for like that Bioshock type, yes. like Bioshock type of feel. But um, I don't. I just feel like I haven't seen enough to make a solid decision on it. Like I've seen like yeah. different types of robots doing cool little interactions and stuff. But I'd probably need to watch like a. 20 minute gameplay trailer or something to really get an idea of it yeah i watched a review on it it looks it is very much bioshock it even has the same mechanics like you you have uh, like abilities like you can freeze things and stuff now it's not like you know where you had uh splicing or anything like that but you got like tech and you unlock things and there are puzzles and you fight it, it really you said it perfect when you said bioshock but like what made it weird for me was like all the news around it. People kept saying that it was like a project funded by the, uh, by Russia. And then on top oh. of that, uh, people kept saying there was a six hour sex scene. What? Like that was a part of like, Is the... that a thing? no, it, it absolutely can't be. But like those are just things flying around this title alone atomic heart and then like you remember when they dropped like some of the announcement trailers like it looked weird then like there was some weird visuals that they dropped for their trailers back then. It, it was a freaky looking game so like in my head i'm already like oh it's too complicated for me i can't play this it, it looked way too much i was like oh nah you got stuff floating in the air looking like goo about to attack you or something i'm done i couldn't understand the concept so i i checked out really early but seeing that it's an actual game kind of blew my mind i was like that's very 2023 yeah that makes sense yeah i could agree yeah. with that right so yeah we had atomic heart drop which eh, Take it or leave it. That dropped February 21st. And then is there anything else that stood out 
on this list. Like, I don't think I played anything else. <gasps> Sons of the Forest. We played that. And that dropped February 23rd. We just played that this Saturday. So good. I yeah. love it. So far, it was I'm really, really enjoying good. It. They've, they've added a lot of quality of life features while also, you know, improving just the overall gameplay. Things feel a lot more realistic. And it's still very, it's still scary, you know, to play. So, oh, yeah. It's terrifying. It's absolutely yeah. terrifying. Yeah, I loved it. I I like I liked it a lot. Mango played a lot more than I did. I feel like you had like at least eight hundred hours. No, how many in hours did you have in the, in the in forest? The f- so remember, Sons uh, of the Forest 3, is the. S- you had three thousand hours. Yeah, I had like twenty nine wow. hundred hours. Yeah, you had twenty. Yeah, so yeah, Mango can appreciate it way more than I can because he played the forest for twenty nine hundred hours. It was one of the first games that we played together, like multiplayer games. We were terrified the first time, but I think Mango likes survival goal games, so he stayed hooked. I came in now and again to be like, "What's going on? What are you making? Uh-huh, let me help a little bit," and then I checked out. But even somebody who hadn't played a lot, I noticed the immediate difference when we played Sons of the Forest. It's still an early access. It still has some things to work out. Like I had some weird glitches when we did our like eight hour stint on Saturday, but right. it, it was still really good. And my final game that I want to point out is Destiny 2 Lightfall. Mm. Mm. I mean, I that's, don't dropping, know. that's dropping Tuesday. You said you don't know? Yeah, because we got to actually like try it out. It looks really good. Yeah, it's but... not even out yet. When we when this video drops, the game will drop. I just like the trailer. They keep doing the ghosts dirty. Like they never get a chance. I feel so <laughs> bad for them. But the big bad looks terrifying. I love the design, the design of is this really character. Unique. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So cool. They... You know, Bungie never fails to be creative. Truly, they get the space stuff down. They 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 stuck to space, and they ne- like when it came to Halo and their games. They they get space right. It's cool, yeah. but yeah, I I'm excited for. I'm just excited for the story. <laughs> I'm just here I mean, for the lore. We have to actually play it. Honestly, we haven't played it in a while. Yeah, it made me pick. It made me want to pick it back up. It made me want to pick it back up. I think the biggest thing with Bungie is that people think that you, everything's behind. Like you do have to pay for their con. Like it's all behind a paywall. Uh, even mm-hmm. the legacy content, we're waiting for it to come out to this day. Even though we paid for that stuff years ago, <laughs> but <laughs> oh well. Well, no, we we messed up. We messed up. Well, we were supposed to transfer our account. We, so we, we didn't did transfer it. our account, and that's where we. Yeah. Ugh, I felt so dumb because I immediately wanted to go back and play uh, the Red War, but I couldn't, and I felt dumb, man. So we'll we just do better than we did. Just do better than we did. But yeah, those are all of our games that we are excited for here on the download, and now we're gonna talk a little bit of drama, just a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna skim through some interesting things we saw. As the year has gone by, because we see everything, we we see everything. So I'm gonna start my timer now. First thing that popped off when we got back from New Orleans, and I'll pull up our our list here. Remember when we got back, and the first thing that happened, of course, was Hogwarts Legacy. That was like the first thing we bookmarked. And yeah. if you're not aware. Yeah. No, I just said yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're not aware, uh, J.K. Rowling is a turf, <laughs> and um, you're gonna have to do your own research on what that means and what that means to the trans community and why she is a transphobe. Now. Um, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of different arguments come around this game. They're like, well, boycotting this game isn't really going to do anything. Uh, why are you guys getting so upset over a game? Blah, 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 this, that, and the other. Just a lot of people. There, there are a lot of people who aren't affected by this running their mouths. And I've seen their comments. I think they're very, very ignorant 
tone deaf. And I think they just need to sit back and stand outside of themselves. But since it's Black History Month, I just have to say for black creators specifically, it is very hypocritical and very ignorant for you to question why the trans community is boycotting this game. Because when we turn around and we expect people to support us simply because we don't like the creator because they've disrespected us or we're trying to get support because we need people to understand that this only affects us, then you need to turn around and give the same respect to the trans community. So, yep. so especially when I see a black creator, cause I can speak at least for my side of the community, it just bothers me seeing them be so just, just so heartless or they can't even be empathetic because it very much could be them on the, on the flip side of the coin. This, this could easily be you. So yeah, that bothered me. I was like, uh, gross. Nah. Yeah. I think unfortunately that's the way that right now people seem to be reacting negatively. They seem to be like, Oh, well, you're not going to tell me not to play this game. And it's like, that's not even really what this is all about, but uh, I don't know. Watch the video in the uh, description. Chelsea explained it. Well, uh, go to the tweet, you know, like it. If you don't agree with her, like it anyway, you know, it helps our impressions. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That streamer, Atrioc was caught he told on himself he that's, had that's what a I, that, that was at the end of the month yes that was january yeah. 30th january was nuts that streamer got caught with a porn folder of deep fakes of streamers that he worked with because he was also twitch staff so these are people that he's interacted with, worked with, seen before, met in person. And he had folders of specific streamers deep faked into like pornographic situations. And he did an apology video with his wife crying behind him. I'm going to tell you right now, Mango. I would be beating you up the whole time in this video. I'd have been popping you in the back of your head. I'd have been cussing you out because there's no way I'm going to just sit there and cry along with you while I, while I watch you apologize. Like they were, he was big married, big married. Yeah, he was, he was, and he was. And she was just sitting back. I hope she left him. I need to, I need to see the results of this. I, that is so embarrassing as a partner. If I ever found, if you ever found out that I had like a folder of streamers that I had deep fakes of, first of all, you don't love me. Second of all, you cheating ass, nasty ass son of a bitch. Third of all, give me all my money back. Like give me my time and my money back. That is, that is insane. But yeah, the implications it was, it just was help. Wild. It was filthy. I just... He don't love her. Um, I guess not. He don't. He don't love her because I wouldn't. You clearly. Right. So that was January. That was the end of our January. Uh, oh, no, that wasn't. That wasn't. Because uh, on January, uh, like right around that time, like January 28th, uh, mm -hmm. people were complaining about uh, Mr. Beast uh, curing blind people. And everybody mm -hmm. had opinions about that. That was. Mm. That's funny. Well, OK, like we all agree that big money is bad. So people who are millionaires, billionaires, I mean, people have a special ire for them because haves and have nots. And he if he just had to make a video this month and it happened to be about curing blind people. And then in my head, I'm like, at least he cured a thousand blind people because the real problem was, was these were all very low effort surgeries. Like they're 10 minute surgeries and these people were no longer blind. And blindness means it has a broad definition. It could mean a lot of things. But um, yeah, the, the fact that it was just a short surgery and it changes their life. 
it's like, yeah, okay. It, it might not have been for the best of reasons, but at least he helped a thousand people. So, of course, Kai Sanat started their subathon on February 1st. It, it's about to close out. And he's closing in on uh, some pretty big sub records, like at least 260,000 subs, I think. Ludwig yeah, was, is at the uh, top. N- so you just keep on. That was Ninja. Yeah, let's see. That was Ninja. Ninja. Has... <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> no, nothing. no, Ninja, Ninja was number two. two. Yeah, Ninja was number two at like 269,000. Ludwig was number one at, I, f- I forgot how much. 290. I think he's yeah. at 290. But yeah, uh, with a couple days left, they'll see if Kai will, you know, close it out. Um, and he's still going to keep going after that. Like, instead of just 28 days, I think he's doing 30. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then they banned Berlizzi on YouTube. Not even a week into Black History Month. February 5th, they banned Berlizzi. And for what? I don't even think we know. So people started bringing back Corey Kenshin's video on YouTube's racism and favoritism, which people don't realize with these, uh, with all these automated systems, there's bias mm-hmm. baked right into it. It is. So... Corey's on to something. I'm curious to see how their uh, uh, demonetization system really works because old Amen. Markiplier and all those other people who had those same videos that Corey had, they weren't getting demonetized, but. Oh, true. That's true. Right. But, yeah. but, but my boy Corey was, and then when he complained, they went back and then demonetized the rest of them. Yeah. They reviewed the, and well, no, they completely wiped his channel off the site. You mean uh, Corey? No, you you just said Berlizzi. Oh yeah, Berlizzi was gone. I meant Corey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something a little more serious after that, like literally the next day. Remember they started talking about that uh, charity soft giving, and I mean, yeah, it was a big. That deal. was that it was, was a big nuts deal because they worked with a lot of people, especially within our our. <sighs> what's the word radar i guess you could say community uh, circle yeah Yeah. just because it was a a lot of the people that had been brought into it were brought into it from recommendations from people also within our community within our circle yes um yes we i mean we worked with soft giving yeah and uh we only did a one-off gig where all of our charity funds went straight to the charity But what they would do after that is that they'd offer you a contract to continue working with them. And and we did receive this contract. We did not sign it because I wasn't comfortable signing it. And I just didn't want to have to tell them in so many words. Some of the contracts had very questionable wording. It did. It says uh, somebody actually reported on. They said, quote unquote, we don't take processing fees. We are funded by tips. But then also in the same contract, it says we also take 4% processing fees for a third party plus a 50% commission. Which means that if there's donations, if you if the streamer raised a thousand dollars, then five hundred dollars of that went to soft giving while well, five hundred went to the charity. And so soft giving's main claim was that, well, you know, OK, well, we we negotiate this with the charity. And so the charity come that most of them come to the conclusion that 50 percent is fair. And so that's why we do it. And it's like, but no. it's not really made apparent, especially it's not being made apparent to the people donating. And for a while they tried to like, they tried to blame like the streamers, like, oh, well, if it's not being made aware to the donators, that's the streamers fault for not talking about their contract, yada, yada. But then the contracts under NDA, it says don't talk about it. So it's all just kind of right. backwards. It was ridiculous. So yeah. please read your contracts, creators, And I think it was just really disappointing for us, especially because we got this from like, we got recommended from people in our circles. So it Uh made me not trust them. I, I was just like, man, how could you, (laughs) how could we be put in this situation? But, um, I'm glad that we paid attention and we were just like, nah, this doesn't sound right. Let's move on. Right. And then right after that, oh, Twitter, Elon, that little boy keep messing up my damn Twitter. Remember, he took away the two uh, FA uh, feature. Yeah, and you like have you to be a Twitter blue. You couldn't do two FA with the. 
with mm-hmm. the text. You you still yeah. it still has two of a you just can't do it with uh, text. Yeah, you will not only Twitter blue subscribers will be able to use text messages. And this is from the Twitter support account on February 17th as their two factor authentication mode. Other accounts can use an authentication app or security key. So now you got to download an app. You can't just text yourself. And it just it's just another way to strip convenience. It's ridiculous. Like, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really can't stand Twitter Blue at this point. I I started using Twitter Blue way before Elon was even talking about buying Twitter. And it was three ninety nine because I wanted to bookmark stuff like that was it. I just wanted to bookmark well, stuff. No, that's not why. And upload videos at 1080p with 60 FPS. Because you wanted to bookmark stuff into folders. You can already bookmark stuff. Bookmark stuff into folders. I apologize. Because it didn't. Because like bookmarking then was a hassle. Because like you had to scroll. But with the folders, it was so much easier. I'm like, okay, now I know where my stuff is and where Mango stuff is. And you can just make folders. You can just keep making folders. So Mm -hmm. that was $3.99 a month. I was like, duh. But then Elon comes in. Now he's like, oh, well, now it's $8.99. And then I'm hearing it's about to be $11.99. And I'm like, what features are y'all even adding to make? In what world am I spending $100 on Twitter? What world? Yeah, that's the problem. They're not sending. They're not. They're not actually like adding any features. It. it, You know what's funny? It's literally like. It's literally like Tesla. So like right now, if you buy a Tesla, right, a lot of the charges that you have are for features that aren't activated in your car, and they're features that are coming. Like you'll notice it'll say stuff like, oh, well, self-driving in neighborhoods coming soon. And they're including that in the price because when it gets approved by the state or by federal legislation, then that'll be allowed. But it's not allowed yet. So why are you charging me for it? Uh, it's the same thing with Twitter Blue. Like they have features that literally aren't enabled yet, aren't even probably aren't even implemented yet, honestly. Um, but they still are charging you for it. it yeah, I hate that. It's really dumb. Yeah, I agree. You said it the best way it could have been said. So, yeah, Elon's bringing that same dumb business model over, and he's being so aggressive about it in the worst way. It's just ruining it's ruining Twitter. It, it just is. I've never thought I'd say that about a platform, but I think I'm watching it go down. Yeah. But moving on from that, um, we are watching the meltdown, literally as of today, of a popular streamer called Aiden Ross. And I just sent Mango a link of this video. So we're going to watch this together. Uh, mm-hmm. Make sure to turn down. He's really loud. I don't know why he always streams in like the most. You ain't sent me no link. I did in Gmail. Oh, okay. On Twitter. Yeah. Um, he always streams in like the most echoey places. But um, yeah. Just to give you a heads up, this man has not only streamed porn on kick to his fan base, which is majority minorities, mm-hmm. but he has also been spouting some wild stuff on Twitter today. Uh, 11 hours ago, as of this moment, uh, tweeting, there are only two genders in all caps, all caps. And uh, he also went to uh, his stream to say that he has been permanently banned by Twitch for no reason. He says Twitch is out to get him and other top streamers. This after he had been banned earlier this year and he moved his platform to kick. And yeah, let's watch this clip. You got it up, Mingo? Yeah, go ahead. Count down. All right. Three, two, one. First thing I'm going to say is this. I already signed my deal to this shit. It don't matter. I already locked myself in on kick. Thank God. Because I told everyone that kick was out to get me, bro. They were out to get me. They're out to get Kai. They're out to get all these fucking streamers. All. Every single one of these streamers, bro. And, you know, I'm going to just tell you guys right now, bro. Um, I'm not even going to bash Twitch completely. But the one thing I'll say is this. If I had blue hair and did my makeup, would you have banned me, Twitch? It's a serious question. Would you apparently ban me? If I had blue hair and did my makeup and fingernails, would you apparently ban me, bro? No, they wouldn't have. Listen, I'm permanently banned on Twitch. It's done, it's already done. But I got permanently banned for no reason. 
at all. No reason. How do you ban someone on Twitch? And my reasoning is for VOD slash on stream when I haven't even been streaming there. This is exactly why everyone needs to see Twitch for what it is. Okay. Mm. I watched it. All right. Yeah. So I kind of, I, I kind of, I, the blue hair nail polish thing threw me off. I think what he's trying to say, I'm trying to understand him is, uh, is he trying to say like, if he's, I don't get it. If I had blue hair painted my nails and did my makeup, would I be banned? Your first mistake was trying to understand him. That's true. I don't get like what the what the what is he I don't get what he's trying to say. But um yeah, uh apparently he's trying to I think he's trying to go at a demographic. I do think he's um, trying to do that. He's saying that Twitch I think panders to a certain demographic. Now, do I have any sympathy for this man? Absolutely not. <laughs> There is there is a level of toxic streamer that you can be where I feel like there's just a point of no return and you just it's you are that now like you that is you and for him to follow up shortly after that and tweet there are only two genders and then I saw another uh tweet about him saying can men be graped and it's like why would you say that out loud like it's it's 2023 and even the people on the call with him were like yes like they just said it very quickly yes right <laughs> yeah like that's the only that's the only right answer yes so like i don't know what kind of meltdown he's having i don't know what he's going through but people really cannot find themselves online absolutely nut stuff absolutely nut stuff and then like he's got some brother <laughs> apparently there's somebody trying to come out as his half brother which is really funny to me of course he's denounced it but he went out of his way so uh jake lucky of course has been covering this and then aiden dm'd him and he said keep yourself safe smiley face and i'm like that's a threat like a threat to me right it's a threat it's a threat. So like I I already have little very little sympathy. Very little sympathy for white or white passing people who use black people to boost their content cuz that's very much what I see with Aiden Ross. Very much what I see. I cannot stand it. That was fun. That was fun. We have just set up and I didn't think we could do it but we recorded for an hour and 33 minutes. I have oh, tapped I knew you us could do it. out. I'm sorry, Mango. Thank you for rocking with me. He's not used to these. I, this is basically like a short stream for me. No, but I thank said, you guys you could so. Talk for an hour. <laughs> Please let me outro us, man. Let me do it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for watching the first episode of the download where we cover two months of content. I promise the next episode is going to be shorter. We'll just be covering one month, March. So you can check me out on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. We also have a Discord that you can join up. I'm Chelsea Bites. I'm a tech content variety creator streamer where I host. like to talk. Host. Thank you, Manager Mango. Where I like to talk anime. I love to talk computers. I love to talk video games and everything in between. I mean, we just talked a whole bunch of drama. Like, oh, my God. Please be please feel free to do your own research and to check out all of my other videos where we dive into, you know, at least two or three of these topics we've talked about today. So, yeah, we, we have a little bit of everything. And, of course, I've got Manager Mango over here. You, what's, your, what's your outro? <laughs> um, that's what I do. I don't do nothing to, besides that, honestly. So I don't I don't have a title to give or nothing. You you can catch me in Chelsea Stream. That's basically it. <laughs> Thank you, Manager Mago. I appreciate you. We'll catch you guys for the next one at the end of March, and we'll see you real soon.
拜。